Hey guys, Tom here with episode 2 of Let's Make a Game Like Pokemon. And today what we are going to be doing is we're looking at the player movement class. So in Pokemon, what used to happen is that the player would move from tile to tile. Um, most modern games you move freely around, however, we're going to do it on the whole tile to tile system. So if the player's on this tile and he walks right, he goes here. Um, also what happens in Pokemon is he rotates the way before he walks. So if he's facing north um, and he wants to walk west, if you just tap the key he'll turn west before he starts walking. Uh, we might implement that one in. So if we should go to scripts, we're going to create a new folder for player. And in the player we're going to create a new script, uh, C sharp script, and it's going to be called player movement. So if you just open that up, then we'll come back when it's open. Alright, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to want to create an enum. Um, and this will be for uh, just directions that we can have. So we're going to say enum direction. And basically an enum is similar to an array, but it's just a string of things that you can um, choose between. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go north, east, south, and west. Um, keep in mind... Sorry guys, turns out that the recording actually cut out there. So I'm just going to start again from where I was. Um, so what we need to do is we're going to have a direction for our current uh, uh, direction that our player is facing and we'll be able to access this for when we're doing the rotating of the player later on. We're going to grab a vector 2 for the input of the player and this is just so we can um, gather what the current player is pressing in terms of the horizontal keys and the vertical keys. We'll be grabbing a ball is moving and we'll be setting that to false for the moment. Uh, this is just a check so we can turn it off for when he has input keys um, so we can move along the grid. Uh, we have a vector 3 for our start position and we'll have a vector 3 for our end position uh, and then we'll also have a float t for time and then finally we'll have a public float walk speed which is equal to 3f. Later on we might even look at adding a running speed as well depending on how the player is moving. Um, and your input. Uh, next we're going to be creating an I enumerator for move and so we'll just take a transform and we'll name it entity and for now we're just going to write yield return uh, 0. At the top of it we want to say is moving is equal to true and then at the end of it we also want to say is moving is equal to false. This is just so it can do its thing and in between it won't recognize any input. In the update function, what we're going to be doing is we're going to say if we're not moving, we want to be checking if our input keys are pressed. So we're going to be setting our input equal to a new vector2, and it's going to grab input.getAxis um, of horizontal, and then input.getAxis of a uh, vertical axis and this is just going to check if the WASD keys are pressed or if the arrow keys are pressed depending on the player's preference they can change that as well um, and so we'll set a value between negative one and one for each of these keys respectively um, we don't need to calculate that at the moment um, uh, so we'll continue so what we're going to do is because we don't want to allow diagonal movements we'll say if the absolute value of uh, input.x is greater than input dot y uh, then we'll just say input dot y is equal to zero and if it's the other way around we're just going to say input dot x is equal to zero and so the absolute value just makes sure that the number is positive and then it checks um, if either of them are larger than the other and then we want to set the other one to zero so you don't get the diagonal movements uh, so what we're going to do now say is if the input um, is not equal to zero um, then we can do the movement and uh, later on we're going to add in collision detection here because the way that we're going to be moving the player um, doesn't allow for collision detection at the current time. So for now we're just going to start the coroutine of move and we'll just pass it the transform. Okay so in the move we're going to create our end position and we're going to set our end position to be a new vector too. Uh, sorry, a new vector 3 and it's going to be at start position dot x plus the system dot math dot sign of input x and the same for the y so we can do start position dot y plus system 
dot math dot sign input dot y and then we can also just write in here uh, start pose dot x uh, sorry start pose dot z and now we also want to do while t is less than 1f uh, so we're going to do a few things our start pose is equal to entity dot position and then our t is also equal to zero so we're just going to reset it every time um, in here we're going to say t is uh, we're going to add to t where time but delta time is times by our walking speed later on will be our current speed but for now it's our walk speed and then our entity's position will be equal to uh, uh, our end position and it'll be lerp from the start position to the end position smoothly with a time of t and then we'll also just return null here just so we can end the loop okay Ah, sorry, not math. I have to load boo one victor three. To learn. <laughs> have me stop there for a bit. Okay, so if we save that, we go over to Unity. It should have our player walking around smoothly. All right. Uh, the down key is not working. However, I'll just have a look at that quick. <laughs> sorry, honest mistake. Up here, we also just want to grab the absolute value of our input to y, otherwise it would always be negative, and that way it would always return a false value. Um, sorry, math f. And if we just check that one, it should be working smoothly. Okay. Alright, so what I think I'll do now really quickly um, is we're not going to be adding in animations until much later on in the season. Um, it'll probably be around episode uh, one to say six at the current time. Um, this is a lot of core functionality I want to add in quickly. However, just to make it look a little bit nice rather than us always seeing her um, his face, is we'll just add in the direction that he's facing, um, just so it's nearly there and ready. So we'll add in a public. Uh, and now we'll just say sprite and this will be our north sprite uh, public sprite east sprite public sprite south sprite and then finally our public sprite uh, west sprite what we'll do is when we're passing here before we move we will also check our input. So if input dot uh, x is equal to zero, uh, sorry, is equal to negative one, then we'll do something like uh, if our input dot x is equal to one, sorry, we'll do it another way. If it is greater, if it is less than zero, that would just be better because sometimes it won't always return one or whatever. If our x is greater than zero, then we'll do something here. If our input dot y is less than zero, and then if our input dot y is greater than zero, So if our x is less than zero, it means he's moving less. So we can say our current dir is equal to direction uh, dot west. And then this one means he's moving to the east. For our input dot y being less than zero, I'm going to say it's he's moving south. I'm going to have to check on that one though. Um, so we just set it to south. And then for our input dot y being equal we can just say it's equal to direction dot north. Next, we're going to set up a switch statement. We could do this in the above ones, but it's just nice because we might need to add the functionality a bit later on. Uh, we'll just switch the current dir, and we're also going to be removing this when we add in the animations. Um, so we'll just say case direction dot north. And then we'll 
break and we'll just create a case for each one. So I'll be back once I've created a case for each one. And so I've created a case for all of them. And now what I'm just going to do is uh, we're going to write game object dot get component and then we're going to say sprite renderer. And then we're going to say dot sprite is equal to north sprite. So I'm going to copy these and paste it along. Uh, this will be equal to east sprite. This will be equal to south sprite. And then this one will be equal to west sprite. Um, perfect. So we're going to jump over to Unity. We're going to zoom on over to our sprite sheet and then our character one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the sprite editor. And just to make this easy on us, I'm going to say this as north underscore zero, this as south underscore zero, uh, west and east respectively. So west underscore zero and then east underscore zero. Okay, so now that I've applied that, we can just go to the player we can go up here. Uh, if you click the lock button, what happens is it will just stay on this window here. So in here, I can just type north, drag the north one there. I can type east, drag the east one there. I can try uh, south and drag the south one there. And then I can type in uh, west and drag the west one there. So if I click play, we should now see that he faces the right way when he walks. So this is good enough for us now before we get into the animation in a later episode. Uh, thank you all for watching. As always, I hope you guys have a great night. Um, if you find that you're struggling to keep up with the videos, you guys can always jump along to my GitHub page. This will always be up to date. Um, if you guys have any questions, please leave it in the comments below and I'll get back to you. Um, but again, have a nice day.